If you're interested in investing in real estate, you may have heard of the Burr method. It's buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. It's a great method that helps investors who don't have a lot of capital steadily build a portfolio of rental properties. You start with one down payment and identify your first property. In the Burr method, you find a distressed property, get a great deal on it, rehab it to bring up its value, rent it so it's a cash flowing property, you refinance it based on its new improved value and use the increased equity that you pulled using the refi to invest in the down payment on your next property. And that's the Burr method. Today we're going to bring back a previous episode from when the podcast was audio only. And it was an episode where I interviewed a friend and client of mine, Chris Coney. Now Chris invests using a modified Burr style. He's not buying distressed properties, but he's using leverage. He's refinancing his existing rental properties to fund his next purchases. So in today's episode, we're going to talk to a Purple Heart retired Iraq War veteran turned grade school teacher who bought his first home with an FHA loan and over time turned it into a substantial real estate portfolio, which when we recorded this episode in May of 2023, Chris owned seven doors in two states plus his residence in California. But since this episode, Chris has purchased two more doors in a third state, bringing his total to nine doors plus his residence. So join us today as we learn from my buddy Chris Coney how a school teacher built his real estate portfolio on State 48 Homeowner. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. So I am uh, incredibly excited about today's podcast episode because uh, so often as we're talking with people about real estate it, uh, as an investment strategy, not just the home that we live in, but uh, additional investment properties, people often have a limiting belief that they can't afford to get into it. And that's why I'm excited about uh, today's guest. He is an Iraq war veteran where he earned a Purple Heart serving his country. He's a grade school teacher, and he is uh, qualified to be on the podcast because he is an Arizona homeowner. Uh, <laughs> he just doesn't live here. <laughs> I've known Chris since he was a junior higher, and I'm excited to talk about his journey as a teacher who built a substantial real estate portfolio. Welcome to State 48 Homeowner, Chris Coning. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. So you are a school teacher and you are on uh, a spring break right now. Yep. And uh, and you and your wife have an adorable little little girl that uh, didn't sleep through the night. <laughs> last <laughs> night. So I yeah. appreciate you making your time uh, today. But uh, yeah, I've been real excited watching you uh, build your portfolio, some of it here in Arizona, uh, some of it in Oklahoma, but you got started in California. Yes. Uh, back in 2009, October 2009, I purchased my first first home in Victorville, California uh, for $125,000. Um it was right after, right after the crash, I guess, in 2008. So it was prime time to get in. Um, I was on deployment in 2007, 2008, ended up getting injured. Uh, was at Walter Reed for a year, um, not doing a lot, just recovering, I guess, going to my appointments. Uh, I started like thinking about, I, I, I mean, I always had my grandpa that was in real estate, so uh, he taught me a lot. And then I actually met a soldier at Walter Reed and he told me about, uh, rich dad, poor dad. So I read that book, uh, and kind of got in, um, that way. Um, I learned from that book and then just kind of started diving in a little bit more, um, picked my grandpa's brain a little bit. And then it wasn't until I actually got transferred out from Walter Reed to Fort Irwin. Uh, that I started looking at some property uh, nearby because I thought I was going to be <clears throat> at Walter Reed for a little, or at uh, Fort Irwin for a little bit. So I um, thought I'd probably buy in Victorville, live there, and then turn into an investment property uh, shortly after um, being out there. So I was at, I ended up being at Fort Irwin for another year. So I bought October 2009, and then uh, shortly after I ended up getting out. So I never did actually live in the property, uh, but I was able to turn it around into an investment property pretty quickly. Um, didn't really know what I was doing with my first one. Uh, made a lot of mistakes. Um, 
but I definitely learned from there and it's got me to where I am now today with my, uh, with my portfolio. Um, so yeah. what was your rank at the time? Uh, when I was there, I, I was an E4. Uh, okay. My last in, last day in the army, they promoted me to E5. So I was a sergeant. I was medically retired as a sergeant. Um, they pinned me the day the day I got out. Um, I ended up getting out August 2010. So um, yeah, I got out to Fort Irwin around August 2009. <clears throat> um, started looking around. I looked in Barstow, but Barstow is just it's pretty far out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Barstow's right outside Fort Irwin, so I went a little farther down uh, the 15 to Victorville um, and found a single-family home. Um, they were going pretty quick. I remember, I remember I'd even, I don't remember putting the offer in. My, my agent just got to the point of she was just putting, like, offers in because they were going so quickly. Yeah. Uh, she called me. I, I remember I was in Chino. It was on a weekend visiting my dad, uh, and she called and said, we got the house. I said, what house? She said, oh, I put an offer in because it was just going so quickly. Um, it was listed for $124.90. We got it for $125. Four bed, two bed house, 1,800 square feet. Um, so, yeah, um, got in there. Actually did some of the, like, work on myself. Had an Army buddy come down with me, a buddy from high school come up. Uh, we put in blinds, um, fixed up some things, and then was planning on staying there <clears throat> for the time I was at Fort Irwin and then ended up getting quickly, quickly out. So then I just turned it into a rental property. And did you self-manage it or did you have a, uh, no, I uh, was recommended a property manager, uh, from the agency I bought it from century 21. So I got in through that, uh, luckily got a really good property manager. I was with him the whole time that I had that property in Victorville. Um, and like I said, I made some mistakes along the way. I didn't, I didn't know how to run the numbers correctly. Um, cause when, I mean, the first probably I'd say three, four years, the cash flow is negative, <clears throat> but I was just happy to have a property. Um, did use FHA the first time <clears throat> with, um, three and a half percent down. So the initial, the initial investment on it was about 12, well, the 14,000 I had to put in. Mm -hmm. Remember at the time, I mean, I didn't have like a lot of wiggle room. Uh, and here I was just putting all my chips in, I would, but I had a property and that's what I was happy about. Um, so, I mean, I've learned, I've learned a lot since 2009 on uh, running the numbers, making sure it works. And, and I mean, you've helped me a lot along the way too, um, providing a lot of insight on what to do, what not to do. And really it comes down to just the numbers, the numbers game, <clears throat> making sure that the numbers, the numbers work. Um, Cause yeah, you can like a property and want to get in, but if the numbers don't work, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> so what, uh, so you started that, that was back in uh, uh, 2009, right? Correct. And uh, when did you get your second property? Second property didn't come till 2000. It was probably around 2017. So it was a it was a fair amount of time. Now you were busy in the in the middle there. You you kind of took that GI bill and uh, went went to town with uh, college, right? Yeah. So uh, after I got out of the army, I moved to Hawaii for a little bit, six seven months, uh, just to live live life a little bit. Uh, then got back and started school. <clears throat> I was living down in Newport Beach. Um, started going to school at a local uh, junior college there. Ended up transferring down to San Diego State and then got my uh, bachelor's degree at San Diego State and then continued on to uh, the University of San Diego to get my master's and my teaching credential. Uh, that was in 2018 I graduated. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. So yeah, doing school and then yeah, 2019 is when it when we bought Cherry Street. So I remember I remember you you posted something on Facebook about I don't know, real estate in Arizona or something and I reached out to you and said how's the rental market? And you said it's really good. So we started talking a little bit. Um I started talking to a lender that we've used now for 
pretty much all our refinances and all our purchases too. Um, I think that's one thing good about getting in real estate is finding those people that are on your team, building your team. Um, you've been a great asset, my grandpa, uh, trusting people. Um, so this lender is one guy that we trust. So we, I reached out to him. We ended up doing a cash out refi on the Victorville house, uh -huh. bought the, um, the house out in Santan in 2019 for, I think it was like 209 is what we bought it for. Check the numbers. You, you made sure I checked the numbers on that one and that one cash flowed right away. Um, and that one's actually done really well for us um, because of about a year, well, even during COVID 2020, uh, properties started just skyrocketing yeah. uh, in Arizona and in California. Um, so I think about a year after I ended up doing a 1031 exchange on the Victorville house, uh, sold that one for 300 and 305, I think is what we got for it. Um, took the, the profit from that and then ended up buying two more out in Arizona, a one in Goodyear and one in Avondale. Yep. Um, and, and I mean, even those have gotten enough equity where last year we took, took equity out of those three properties and then ended up purchasing the, the ones out in Oklahoma. And how many, how many are in Oklahoma? Well, we ended up getting four out in Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I reached yeah. out to you and you, why well, I said, I was like, I'm ready to buy another one in Arizona. And you said, yeah, it's just, you, you said you bought one out in Oklahoma. And so uh, you got me connected with an agent out there and um started looking check the numbers and it all worked so yeah i ended up doing that the plan was three uh but after talking to my wife i was able to stretch it to four so <laughs> um, so yeah i mean the, the goal the goal is one a year uh now uh i mean it's taken a lot i mean it's taken a, it was a big gap between 2009 and then 2019 10 years to buy the second one um could we have bought another one in between? I mean, maybe, but I was busy with school. I wasn't really yeah. thinking about um, growing the portfolio. Um, but I think real estate is probably the best investment um, investment out there. Um, yeah, there's risk to it, but I don't. I think the the benefits out, outweigh the risk as long as you do your homework. Um, it's a good, it's a good, uh, good, good gig to do. So, um, and then let's clarify what you do professionally. <laughs> uh, I teach first grade. Yeah. Seven yeah. Uh, so teaching is a, it's, it's one of those professions that it's pretty well known that the, uh, the pay is, is not in the six figures. Correct. <laughs> and, uh, and yet you've been able to, so including your home that you live in, if my count is correct, you're at eight properties. Correct. Yeah. So we have uh, our primary home and then seven other investment properties. And then uh, you, you, uh, you've also brought some other people into real estate investment, including your brother. Yes. Uh, who, uh, who also bought an Arizona uh, rental. Yes. And, you know, that one, that one was fun. You talked about uh, a couple minutes ago, you said, you know, it, it really is about the numbers. And uh, it was, it was fun with uh, him and his wife as, as they were looking and, and they're like, oh, I, I you know, I, I don't like the backyard or, or this. And, you know, we're just reminding them, well, it really, <clears throat> look at the numbers, look at the numbers. And they ended up finding a place that the numbers were great and it had a great backyard <laughs> <laughs> that they, I'm not, I'm not sure they've ever actually seen it. So I know. Well, that it's funny you say that because, like, when I was looking in Victorville, I was going with the. I would on the weekends. I would go with the agent, even like um, after formation on during the week. I'd go with the agent to go look at these places, and I always thought like I need to go look, go see. And so that mindset of like, I had to do a mindset shift. And my grandpa even told me this. He goes, "You're not living there." Um, he said, it's just, it's a house to be rented. Um, it's not, so I, it's the mindset shift of, you just need to, you just need a house. Um, people are going to live there. So it needs to be, you know, you don't want to, you don't want something that's run down, but um, 
but yeah, you don't have to like on the purchases for Arizona. I mean, you went out there uh, and checked them out. Um, but that's what goes back to having a good team, having someone that you can trust, um, someone that knows what they're what they're doing, what to look for, uh, someone that's not just trying to get a sale. Um, so that was a good thing with working with you. Uh, you went out to the properties, checked them out. Uh, you invest yourself, so uh, you know what you know what to look for. Um, you didn't ever tell me that the backyard was was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you now, uh, work with the numbers, yeah. This episode is brought to you by Klaus Team Real Estate Solutions, powered by Real Broker. At the Klaus Team, we're focused on making sure our clients have the most solutions, the solid representation and risk mitigation they deserve, and an incredible experience from day one. For us, it's about 212. At 211 degrees, water's hot. At 212 degrees, water boils. Boiling water produces steam, and steam can power a locomotive. It's that one extra degree that makes all the difference. At the Klaus team, we go the extra degree to make your real estate journey exceptional before, during, and after your purchase or sale. For us, it's not just about a transaction. From buying your dream home to purchasing wealth through investments, our 212 experience ensures outstanding service every step of the way. (laughs) But don't just take our word for it. Check out our client reviews on Google or klausteam.com slash reviews. We're Klaus Team Real Estate Solutions, your real estate partner for life. So let's talk about why uh, this style of investing is uh, is, is a great uh, method of investing. So, uh, you know, when you buy stocks, you're just looking for the stock to to rise and, mm-hmm. and, and fall. And of course, it's it, it, just like stocks, it's a long game. Uh, it's not you know, always a, a quick one. Now there's methods of uh, investing in real estate, you know, like, you know, fix and flip and those things that the rewards come a little faster. But uh, when we're looking for returns, we're looking at cash flow. You brought up cash flow. Now getting started, cash flow isn't generally the the big number, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, uh, especially when you finance. And so you financed all of the purchases. Correct. Yeah. Uh, all of them are conventional loans. Um, but that's the biggest thing. I mean, like if the bank's going to give me money, then I'm going to use it. Um, the biggest thing now is leverage. With the first one, I had to wait to get that equity. Uh, and then I used that equity to leverage into another property. Uh, so then I was at two and then I was able to take from the first one again and then buy two more with the 1031 exchange. So then we were at four. Um, sorry, we were at three. Um, with those three, I only had to wait another year. And then I used leverage again, took some money out, cashed out refi on those three, and then was able to buy four. So now we're at seven. Um, so I think it's like you said, it's a lot, it's the long game. Uh, oh. it takes a while, uh, for me, it took about 10 years to get, uh, that ball. It's a slow moving ball, but now I think where we're at, it's gonna, it starts to pick up speed, um, to grow the portfolio quicker. Uh, now we're cash flowing on seven properties. So you have the cash flow coming in and then you have a renter paying down your mortgage. Uh, and so that's a big piece. So you brought up the fact that your down payment on that original property was around what? 11, 12,000. Yeah. I mean, 3.5% FHA. Um, so it wasn't a lot, the initial investment into where we are now. Uh, I still like kind of laugh about it. Like here I put, you know, 12, 14,000 in, and then now have grown um, into having seven properties. I mean, yeah, we have mortgages still <clears throat> on those properties, but I mean, over a million dollars in in homes um, from a $125,000 house that I bought back in 2009. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's the long game. Um, because, yeah, people could be scared. Well, I don't know what's going to happen with the market. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with the market, but it's still, if you buy and hold, if the numbers are working, uh, buy and hold is what it is. Um, as long as the rent pays your mortgage, then yeah, um, then you should be good. Uh, because, yeah, the housing market might <clears throat> fluctuate. You might, they might lose some value, but uh, the rental market doesn't doesn't really follow what the housing market, it's not as quickly, I guess. Um, and the rental market's been really well um, lately. 
I think it's going to start flattening out a little bit, but um, overall, we've uh, every year we've been able to increase rent, uh, which also in makes that gap of cash flow more. Um, take the cash flow, put it away, and just keep keep buying. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're funding uh, quite a uh, impressive uh, retirement with that. How old are you now? Thirty five. Thirty five. Yes. And you have over a million dollars in real estate. Yes. And uh, so did you put cash into any of the other purchases? Uh, so a lot of it was just using the cash out refi. Uh, we maybe had to put, you know, a couple grand here or there. Uh, if we went over, um, there's been some repairs, but that's just the name of the game. You're going to have repairs along the way with uh, with these Houses, but the and way that, I, and that's something you you've worked into your uh, your uh, spreadsheet for each yeah. of those properties yeah. is counting on that. And so you know when we look at how much we're going to charge for rent, we need to make sure that we're not only covering the mortgage and and uh, taxes and insurance and uh, vacancies and uh, repairs and those kinds of things to make sure that it's uh, still a positive uh, cash flow. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's that's the thing. Doing your homework, uh, making sure the Making sure the numbers work is what it, I mean. We keep saying it, but it yeah, it just comes down to a numbers game. Um, it's not about if the one room has uh, blue paint on the wall or if it has a uh, big backyard with grass and a waterfall or whatever. It's what it comes down to is do the numbers work, um, and it's it's a simple formula. You just plug it in, and yeah, that's what it comes down to. Have you had any nightmares uh, with tenants? <laughs> uh, just recently, we had just one not pay, I guess. Uh, we just had to do an eviction um, in Arizona. It's still, the eviction has been, has gone through. So um, now it's just quick turnaround. Get, get it uh, rent ready, get a new tenant in there. Um, you hope that, you know, your property manager's, check, make sure uh, they do the background checks. Um, so you hope that your tenant is going to be good, but sometimes you just come around. Some, and sometimes some things stuff. happen in their lives too, and yep. Uh, yep. things change. Um, yeah, I had a similar experience in Oklahoma where, you know, we, we got, uh, they, they moved in mid-month, so I got that that first half of a month, and then they paid on the first, and then never heard from them again. Yeah. <laughs> and so it basically took the property out of uh, cash flow for a couple a couple months while we went worked through that and then um, some repairs my property manager called me and said hey we finally got in now did you have a, a stove and a fridge I, I said I heard the word did <laughs> and uh, had to re repair a couple doors and things like that but uh, other than that uh, things have uh, I think people think that um, it's a lot more of a headache than it actually is. It's it's really not. Um, I mean, you can find, you can get word of mouth from people about property managers, uh, Google search, uh, you can read the reviews. It's pretty easy to, you know, interview. Um, you can call and interview uh, property managers to see what fits, fits what you want. Uh, but I think across the board, it's usually about a 10% um, fee, but I think it's more than, what's the word I'm looking for it's um well it 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 takes you from being an active investor to a passive investor and and right. you know when we look at uh you know you you talked about rich dad poor dad a big big a lot of that is looking for these passive income streams and and it, it really becomes quite passive when you have a property manager taking care of everything for you and every now and then you got to get involved again but uh you know, you're able to to see your money work for you and instead of you working for your money. Well, yeah. And I mean, because I, with teaching, there's no way I could uh, manage an eviction and uh, and teach six and seven-year-olds all day, so. And and find the, the the tenants and interview them and do yeah. background checks and and make repairs and respond quickly and, and those kinds of things. Yep. So uh, you went to Oklahoma as well. So you now pay taxes in three states. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, California, Arizona, and Oklahoma. 
but it's funny how it's full circle. I was just talking to an army buddy because I did my basic training out in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Okay. Um, and I was just talking to him and I said, hey, I, did I tell you I bought some more property? He said, no. He said, where at? I said, Oklahoma. And he laughed. I said, no, I'm not joking. And he's like, just funny that we're back back in Oklahoma. Um, I haven't been I haven't been back to Oklahoma since basic training, but I have uh, four. I've never years. been. <laughs> 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 but I mean, that's the good thing now with I mean the internet and everything. You can just look at pictures. Um, you don't have to go to look at these properties, um, and just having having good people on the ground, uh, building that team, that trust. Um, it it helps. Um, you're the one that got me in contact with the the agent out there and he invests himself he buys real estate so i think that's a that's a key point is finding an agent that also invests um because they know they know the game they know what to do they know what to look for um, yeah and, and and you you said uh you know building a team including the lender um i think it's important uh and and a lot easier when they're real estate investors as well because uh they they understand the language a little bit more they um the, it's it's easier to have those conversations with with them as well yeah so, no, i agree all right well chris thank you so much for uh taking the time to to share your story i think it's uh pretty cool and uh, i i hope that people can come away think understanding that you know you built a real estate empire as an e5 <laughs> elementary school teacher yeah no it's uh i mean i've been very blessed with the life i've been given um but i think it's just using using the tools um learning about it um that's one thing i've learned about real estate investing is they're not you'll find people that are just more than happy to share information um it's not like a cutthroat like competition where i'm not going to tell you where to go buy because i'm going to buy there no there's enough real estate out there to share the share the wealth with others, um, I think it's yeah, it's it's a good gig to do get to get into. Um, it takes a little while after that first one, but it, then the the dominoes start to start to fall pretty quickly. Um, like I said, our goal is one a year. I say our uh, me and my wife. I think I the biggest thing is finding a team too. Uh, she's on my team. Um, I don't just buy these on my own. I I reach out to her. I just, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And so she double checks my work too. make sure <laughs> going in the right track. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes um, the numbers will look significantly different when you're, when you're buying cash versus financing, because you got to work in all those financing costs. And yeah. sometimes that throws you out, but um, it's a great way to acquire real estate because, you know, you are able to just buy the property for the down payment. And that that's a big piece of the return is because you're you're able to see a cash on cash return. Uh because you just you 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 know you 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 buy a you know let's say you're putting 20% down you, you know you, you know if it's if it's a hundred thousand dollar property then you you bought it for twenty thousand dollars. Yeah you come at the end of the day you come walking away with uh you know, seeing the appreciation, you, you you know, after, you know, so many years, then you're walking away with a property that's worth substantially more than a hundred thousand, but you still only ever put in 20,000. And in, yeah, your case, and then, in your case, only 11,000. <laughs> uh, I mean, the equity uh, from someone else paying down your mortgage, you're not paying your mortgage. Someone else is paying your yeah. mortgage. For you, um, and you're, you're getting all the benefits from it, tax benefits. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I, I it's just a, it's a good gig to get into. Um, yeah, I that's why I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, I'm trying to beat my grandpa. He has what 13 properties, so the goal is 14. Uh, but I'll probably try to see that. <laughs> and you brought an excellent point that we'll go out with is you know the renters are paying your your mortgage for you, and so if anybody out there is is still renting. Mm -hmm. um it's it's one of the the realities is you you are buying a house uh you just don't get to keep it and and people like chris get to keep it <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we need we need renters but uh but yeah if you're if i if i if i was renting i would try to get out as quickly as i could um 
because yeah, you're you're essentially you're paying someone someone else's mortgage is what you're doing. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, thank you for having me, Scott. I appreciate it. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.